Hi, it's uh, Dawn here at Stickle Tarn and it's a beautiful sunny morning. Um, although um, we, we are still getting frost. We did have a frost there this morning, but they're nowhere near as they used to be. And I'm just admiring the blossom on the trees. All these trees along. Oh, I don't know. Can I show you the whole strip? Let me turn the camera around to show you. All these trees here, which go around this edge of my um, big centre field, which is still full of scaffolding waiting to be moved. Uh, these are all wild cherry trees. <clears throat> and um, I planted, there's a hundred of these in total. And I planted them with my granddaughter many years ago. Um, so it's nice to see them all actually coming into flower. A couple of them did produce a few cherries last year. Um, and, and of course, these are all just for the, the birds. So this one here hasn't made it, unfortunately. But any that haven't made it, what I am going to be doing is um, replacing them with crab apple. Uh, some of them are shorter than others because over the years the sheep have got out and had a bit of a nibble, the alpacas have had a nibble, the goats have had a nibble. Um, those that they haven't managed to nibble are really putting on a lot of growth like this one. You know, it's way above me now. It's got to be about eight, nine foot. Um, yeah, lost a few of them just along this bit here. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be putting putting some crab apple in along here. And this one here, this one I think has done the best. It's full of blossom. And it's a really, really good size. So the willow, of course, that's all good. And yeah, so we're just making the most of the spring weather. Um, getting lots of jobs done outside. So all of this is about to be moved in the next week or so, which will be good. It means we can clear the field up. Um, we might even be able to do some small electric fence paddocks and move uh, alpacas or sheep or something in there just to graze it down we shall see uh, but as you can see we've still got a bit of a a mud fest going on 
we've had a whole week of nice drying weather which has been brilliant and but this is where Martin was going with the tractor he'd come down here turn and that's where he was picking up all the big bales so it's all got churned up but now it's it's actually drying out you know fairly well um, so today he's going to attempt to roll up some of it it'd be nice if we could get rid of these big ruts here um, yeah so he's gonna attempt to roll us some of it today especially all this bit up here because that's all fairly dry up there now uh, we've had a lot of campers the past few weeks and we put the campers if you can see where the ducks are right over there because it's been too muddy to get them anywhere else um, chickens are now out of bird flu lockdown which is good so they came out of lockdown on Tuesday um, so I'm alternating it then ones from that run are out today they'll be out tomorrow and so forth and yesterday you'll see on one of my little videos that we moved I moved the little chicks yesterday um, I've got six little chicks that will be three of them will be joining this lot here um, but yeah the chickens are off out and about uh, pecking around up there where the sheep are at the moment so it's nice to see them out and about yeah so we've just been enjoying everything it's um, really good everything is shooting up uh, so I've done a, done a few little videos over the past fortnight I have been very very poorly I've had well I thought it was flu I had Oh. Um, and I ended up going to the doctor beginning of this week uh, because I felt um, let me I ended up going back to the going to the doctor beginning of this week um, because I felt I'd got an infection in my ear um, this one here which I still haven't got hearing in properly yet I was in a lot of pain in my ear um, I was coughing up a lot of phlegm I had a lot of congestion all up here where in the area where I'd had my operation um, and to me it just all seemed infected so I went down to the doctor and uh, he checked everything over and he agreed yes I did have uh, a raging infection going on and it needed to be nipped in the bud before any damage was done in my operation site um, so he put me on antibiotics I'm now uh, four days in and definitely a big improvement uh, my ear is still blocked up but it has periods where it does clear um, yeah so hopefully another few days and you know I'll be on be on top of it all but it has really, really knocked me for six this past fortnight. I uh, did a farmer's market last Sunday, which wasn't the best idea because I was out in the cold and the damp. Um, it was a good farmer's market though. It's one that I'd organised for our local area and it was very well supported, which was good. Um, let me sit down for a minute. Yeah, I've got, got a new bench. Uh, yeah, so it's been it has been a bit of a bit of a struggle this past fortnight, um, and Martin came down with it as well. So that's why why we both thought it was flu. Um, and I'd been I'd been in the supermarket, and then it was a day after Easter Monday, and there was quite a long queue there. And there was a young gentleman in front of me and he was coughing and spluttering and, and everything. And I stepped back away from him and he turned and he said to me, um, it's OK, I haven't got COVID. He says, I think I've just got flu. 
and then a few days later I started with a raging sore throat, running a temperature, etc, etc. But when I saw the doctor the other day and I went through how it all started and it started the same way with Martin as well. He's recovered quite quickly from his. Um, the doctor's done a swab off the back of my throat. I did do a couple of COVID tests and they were negative. Um, but the doctors took a swab because he seems to think it might have been strep. There's been a lot of um, strep A going around. Um, and people with suppressed immunity, which I've got. Um, it, it's a real difficult fight against it. So hence, that's why he's put me straight on the antibiotics. Um, yeah, so I'll get the results of those in the next day or so. Um, you never know, it might, might just be that it is, it is flu. Um, but yeah, just been plodding on as normal. Um, I've been having a real big issue, real big issue with mice in the polytunnel and they've been shredding all my young plants. Um, and so now I've been, I've been putting uh, break back traps down. Um, so once they're caught, that's it, they're killed. And in the past, the past, I think it's about the past fortnight I've been putting them down. In the past fortnight I've caught 18 mice um, who I've just popped into the compost heap and um, yeah su surprisingly on one of the groups that I'm in um, which uh, it's a prepper survival group and I posted in there about the mice and quite a few people took offence that I was using traps that would actually kill them um, but like I pointed out, this, this is our food, you know, we, we're, we're not growing our food as a bit of a game and then popping to the shops and buying it, you know, this is our food for us to eat and if we're having to battle vermin, um, you know, we have to take steps against vermin, uh, but they, the, these members didn't see it like that, they saw it as cruel, uh, maybe I should learn to live alongside the mice. Uh, well, the average mouse can, it starts re reproduction at six weeks old. That's when they become viable for breeding. And they'll have on, uh, they can have up to 12, 15 in a litter, little pups. And they think then in six weeks, you know, those are ready. Um, yeah, the lifespan of a mouse is perhaps only 14 to 18 months. But in its lifespan, it can produce two, th no, five, uh, what was the figures? 5,000 and something, I'll, I'll pop them on the screen because I've got them written down indoors. 5,000 and something, or was it 2,000 and something? Mice, during that time, who will then go on in six weeks time to reproduce and reproduce. So 18 is, it, it's helping to control the numbers. Um, we'll never get rid of them. We are a farm, we do have mice, we have rats. Again, rats, um, their reproduction, I'll pop the figures up again um, of how many they can reproduce in a year. So you do have to, you, you can't just catch and catch and release. For one, releasing elsewhere, I think is very, very cruel. Cool. You know, if I catch them here in my polytunnel, they're used to finding their food and water in this vicinity. You know, I take them five miles up the road and release them. They don't know where their food is, where the water is. They've got no shelter. They're in somebody else's territory. Um, and, and I think that's a lot, very, very cruel cool thing to do. Um, this way, they're killed instantly and they're disposed of and it just helps to keep the numbers down. Uh, when I checked the traps this morning, there was nothing in them. Um, hopefully now the weather's got better, they've moved outside. We don't set traps up outside. I only set them up in the areas where they're causing me damage in the polytunnels. Um, we don't have them coming in the house. If we did, I would again use the same methods. I would trap them and dispose of their bodies. We don't use poison so yeah I, I was quite surprised to hear members 
in a prepping survivalist group, you know, saying, well, you know, this isn't the apocalypse. We should be learning to live beside nature, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm not waiting for an apocalypse, you know, to, to start growing my food. I'm growing it now. Um, and and th there is, there's another reason even more now, I think, for people to get start getting into their food, growing in their food. But I'm going to do that in another video during the week on a Wednesday waffle video. Anyway, that's my take on mice. Why we trap them, why we trap to kill and we dispose of them. And, and if people don't like it, tough titty because this is our food at the end of the day. And... It's a, a them and us situation in the growing areas. Anyway, I'm going to go and make myself a cuppa and I'm going to sit here and enjoy a bit of sunshine before the lads turn up to do some logging. Um, and then I'm going to potter away in the polytons. I've actually got some trees this evening. I'm going to start getting planted out when it's a bit cooler. Um, yeah, so... Have a good weekend, everybody. Enjoy the spring sunshine uh, if you've got it. If you haven't, it'll surely be on its way to you very, very soon. And take care and don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I've got a load of uh, little videos coming up now um, of what little bits and pieces I've managed to film over the past fortnight. But take care, everybody, and I'll speak to you again soon. Right, the little chicks have been moved out. They're sharing accommodation with the goats in the goat house. So we've got six little chicks there. Um, six out of the eight eggs. Uh, I don't know if you can see them all. They've only just come out here, so. A nice bit of um, space here to scratch around and grow up in. It's a bit too cold still to put them outside in the outside brooder, and I haven't got room in the barn for them this year with all the building supplies stacked there. Um, so I've temporarily had them in the house in a cardboard box, but yesterday I had an incident where two of them got out and one of them vanished and I thought the dogs had eaten one um, but it actually turned up uh, in the evening so all's safe and well there so I thought right time to get them outside so that's what I've been up to today right tonight we are eating out while the sun sets so let me uh, flip you around and show you. I've got my hat on to keep the wind out my ear. Um, cause I've had a really sore ear. But I'm sitting here in the sunshine. So let me flip you around and show you what I mean by eating out. There we go. We've got the bonfire going. And in the Dutch oven, we have got a sausage casserole, which Martin's cooking for dinner tonight.